Welcome to the CSEC Physics Masters YouTube channel, the channel that will allow you to master CSEC Physics and make what was once thought to be difficult look very easy. Let us jump right into it by looking at physical quantities. In physics, we try to study and analyze the universe in hopes that we can obtain critical understandings of the different mechanisms that exist within nature and to use the knowledge we have garnered to increase the standard of living for humanity. The entities that exist around us, like temperature, power, energy, volume, heat, current, and many others, are all called physical quantities, and there are thousands of them. These physical quantities can, however, be divided into two major groups. These include 1. Fundamental quantities and 2. Derived quantities. Starting with fundamental quantities. Fundamental quantities are the basic quantities from which all other quantities have been derived or taken from. There are seven of them, and these have been illustrated in the table as shown. Now, if you take a keen look at the table, you will see that it starts with mass. Then there's length, time, temperature, current, amount of substance, and luminous intensity. All of these are the seven fundamental quantities. Each quantity is denoted by its own symbol, and each quantity also have a basic SI unit within which it is measured. The basic SI units themselves also have their own symbols. Now, analyzing this table in greater detail shows that mass is measured in kilograms, and the symbol for the kilogram is kg. Length is measured in meters, and the symbol for the meter is a common m. Time is measured in second, and the symbol for the second is S. Temperature is measured in Kelvin. Current is measured in Ampere. Amount of substance is measured in Mole. And luminous intensity is measured by a unit they call Candela. What we should also note is that most physical quantities have units in which they are measured. The SI units are the internationally accepted standard units. And even though some physical quantities can be represented in other forms of units, one should always strive to represent physical quantities in their SI unit form. Both the quantities and the units have symbols that are used to represent them, and this makes it easier for candidates to perform lengthy calculations. Moving on to derived quantities, we see that as their name suggests, Derived quantities evolve from the combination of two or more fundamental or even other derived quantities. These quantities are formed whenever we multiply and or divide two or more fundamental quantities. A fundamental quantity and one that has already been derived or by the multiplication and division of two other derived quantities. Looking at the first example to show how derived quantities are formed from two fundamental quantities, we see that speed is equal to distance over time. Distance and time are fundamental quantities. Distance is just another name for length. Distance is divided by time to give you speed. Speed is a derived quantity that came from the combination of two fundamental quantities. Example 2 highlights a derived quantity that is produced from one fundamental quantity and one that has already been derived. In this case, force is equal to mass times acceleration. Force is a derived quantity that is produced by multiplying mass and acceleration, where mass is the fundamental quantity and acceleration is a quantity that has already been derived. Example 3 highlights the production of a derived quantity from two other derived quantities. In this case, pressure is equal to force over area. Pressure is a derived quantity, force is a derived quantity, and area is also a derived quantity. And force is divided by area to give you another derived quantity. In this case, it is pressure. Table 2 highlights some common derived quantities that we will be looking at at a later date each of which is denoted by its own symbol and each of which has its own defining equation that describes it. Arising from the defining equation, you have the derived SI unit and these are very important as the derived SI unit can give you the equation and vice versa. 
The last but certainly not the least column is the SI unit name and symbol. Now this is the name that you will give to the unit of the quantity whenever you are performing equations. But one should make note of the fact that some derived quantities have no SI unit name and as a result of this when representing their units we use their derived SI units. Density and speed are two such examples. Guys, that is it for the lesson today. I would recommend that you watch the video as many times as possible until everything that was said cements itself into your minds. Please remember to like, share and subscribe. And also know that the book of which the information is coming from is a CSEC Physics Master's Notes and Workbook authored by Tenaj S. Campbell. And this can be found in the Kindle store on Amazon. So you can go there and acquire one if you like. Or if you want me to send the ebook format to you directly, please notify in the comments box below.